Um, yesterday, I was uh, as I was preparing for uh, for the message, and uh, uh, I was looking into uh, you know just reading different passages, reading some some uh, reading some explanations on it, and uh, and came about to read about some uh, you know the star that appeared and. You know, just the whole thing about Jesus' birth is just completely incredible. If you look in the details involved in Jesus' birth, how everything had to fall in place to make all this happen. It was, um, it was like uh, this well-oiled machine that worked through everything and everything came to place. I mean, imagine the, the, the wise men, they were, they were trying to read Jesus for some time, so the star had to be up in the sky for some time now the star had to kind of guide them somehow and then all of these events all these prophecies where Jesus had to be born I mean you have to understand we're thinking about I was trying to bring a video I was just couldn't download it it was a weird format but for, for a star just to appear in the sky it couldn't be just some kind of shining light the star you know if you look into the universe into our solar system and how the stars work and how everything work it had to be orchestrated by God and you have to understand star is a solar system in itself and so how how um, how God had just orchestrated the birth of Jesus Christ and how everything just fell into pieces how uh, how everything how all the prophecies was fulfilled is just incredible and that's why this morning we're not just celebrating the birth of somebody just just uh, uh, somebody's birth but we're celebrating a, a, a event that took place in the history that cannot be repeated that cannot be um, uh, fabricated that cannot be um, duplicated it's a specific event that was set by God for salvation of humankind and that's what we were celebrating today we're celebrating and remembering a birth of Jesus Christ that brought forth something very very incredible brought forth salvation and reconciled man with God and this is my message going to be today um, the message titled God God is with us and uh, <clears throat> I want you to go to Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. We're just going to read a short portion of the scripture for us to lay a foundation of what we're going to be speaking to this morning. And um, so while you're opening your, your scripture, I just want you to bring you a couple, couple facts about Christmas and where it came from. So the first Christmas was celebrated on December 25th. Of 336 AD in Rome so this is where the Christmas started um, just a couple of fun facts Saint Nicholas was the Bishop of Turkish town of uh, Myra in the in the early 14th century the Dutch first made him into a Christmas gift giver and Dutch settled settlers brought him to America where his name eventually became the familiar Santa Claus so if you're wondering where Santa Claus came from, it started with all St. Nicholas. In Germany uh, and some other uh, Western Europe uh, countries, St. Nicholas or N Nicholas uh, comes at night from, uh, from the 5th to 6th December. And where children have their boots instead of stockings, boots all shined and clean in the front of the door or, or the window. He will leave toys and uh, nuts and oranges, apples and chocolates for the good children. And the bad children gets a branch to use by their parents to punish the child so those of you that didn't get any gifts for Christmas you're lucky because uh, you didn't get a branch <laughs> so uh, I thought that I thought that was interesting and um, do you know that the current Santa Claus and the colors of Santa Claus was actually made by coca-cola in 1931 before that Santa Claus was wearing green that's why I'm wearing green today so and he was slim and fit so he could fit through the chimney but coca-cola and this was his name guy designer whatever his designer was Hodden son bloom he created santa fat and in red color so anyways that's just some interesting facts about christmas it has nothing to do with what we are about to read but uh we're gonna we're gonna read from matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and a couple verses there and she will have a son and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins and you can underline that if you want to all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet verse 23 Luke the virgin will conceive a child she will give birth to a son 
and they will call his uh, they will call his name Emmanuel which means God is with us so we're gonna come back to the scriptures but <clears throat> when Jesus was born there was hope born when Jesus was born there was a new chance in life was born when Jesus was born billions of of lives were at stake based or, or awaiting Jesus's birth because Jesus's birth was not just split our history Jesus's birth was not just um, significant for Israel the nation of Israel and Jews but Jesus's birth brought salvations to many people Jesus's birth brought new life to those that are in distress those that are suffering Jesus birth brings a second chance to those that failed many times Jesus's birth brings a life to those dreams that were buried Jesus's birth brings um, destinies restored and brings fulfilled goals to the to people's lives Jesus's birth is very significant because if it wouldn't be for his birth many of us wouldn't be here some of us well let's just put it this way none of us would be here today because we wouldn't we wouldn't have to celebrate anything we wouldn't have that hope and faith what that we have today in Jesus and what Jesus has to bring for us some of us we were living a not not so good life and we were living life that was distractive the life that would end us up some of us would have ended up in jail some of us would have ended up killed some of us would have ended up overdosed some of us would have ended up um, in many different places but we were sure because of Jesus we would not be here today and so that's why when we're celebrating today the birth of Jesus Christ we're celebrating a new life for ourselves we're celebrating a second chance it's not just even a second chance we're celebrating many chances in our life we're celebrating for ourselves we're celebrating a dreams and goals that will come and be fulfilled because Jesus Christ came to empower us gave us a new life and gave us salvation amen the reason why Jesus had to come on this earth is because right from the beginning when Adam and Eve they were in the garden they were with God there was there was harmony there was everything that you can think of there was paradise but because uh, because of sin because what because sin entered into our life we were separated from God and our lives came under the curse of sin under pain suffering and all these things and the biggest problem of all is that we were separated from God and when sin came into this world we were in need of savior that's why in, in Luke chapter 2 uh, where um, Brittany read the scripture that angels came to the shepherds and they said that the savior was born they didn't say a child was born they didn't say uh you know a, a king was born but they said a savior was born a messiah was born because ultimately what we needed as a humanity is when we were dying in our sins when we were perishing in our sinful nature we needed a savior and to save us from our sin you have to think you have to you have to put this into perspective if you look at this world and you look at our lives and look at the world and if you and you see this world you know there's so many wars there's so many problems so many econ economical problems so many epidemics so many uh just hatred and and all of this all this bad and negative things and if you if you think about this if you remove sin from this earth this earth will be paradise because when you remove sin you remove hatred when you remove hatred there's automatically there is love and harmony when you remove sin you remove wars you remove the epidemics if you remove sin 
you remove sickness because sin is the cause is the root cause of all sicknesses I mean if you remove sin out of this world this world becomes a paradise and becomes a perfect place so God being a good God he's always good instead of sending us gifts like we receive gifts on Christmas like we um, instead of being like a Santa Claus that would send us gifts he decided instead of fixing um, our external problems instead of fixing the pain and the suffering instead of fixing um, all of these things he decided to go deeper he decided to go into the root of the problem and he wanted to fix the root of the all these problems and it was it was sin and in order to fix sin he had to come up with a plan to do it and the only way to do it was so that Jesus Christ can be born as a man he could live this life being God but being man fully man at the same time he would live a sinless life he would be tempted in every way that we are tempted as human beings and he would overcome sin and then he would go on the cross and die for us so that he could include us into his victory into his victorious life so that in our lives we could be we could we don't no longer have to live under sin and that we can walk and we can live in a life of life uh, how can I put this a life without sin which produces a blessed life which produces a life of paradise what we needed in reality was not a relief from our problems what we needed is not um, relief from a sickness and suffering and struggles what we needed was a savior because savior can deal with sin and when sin is dealt with its root we can live a victorious life we can live blessed life we can we can live a healed life we can live a life of victory and life of overcoming by removing sin Jesus removed religion because for all of these years after the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden after the fall of humanity humanity was always trying to reach out to God humanity was always trying to reach God in some sort of way that's why we started having so many different religions people started worshiping all different all kinds of different idols carved images people started being uh, dedicating mountains to different gods they started to go into the spirituality all because human race humanity was seeking to reach God because the relationship was gone and so to replace relationship that was originally in the garden religion came and took its place we tried to satisfy ourselves with a with a set of rules and regulation which we, we, we tried to satisfy ourselves with um, a, a, a way of reaching God we try to satisfy uh, try to reach God in many different ways through certain rituals and and and, and um uh, different um, forms of religions and every religion is trying to reach God on this world because the relationship that was in um, in the garden originally was gone and when sin came relationship was replaced with religion but this is why the this is why Jesus was sent on this earth is so that he can remove sin and by removing sin he could re-establish a relationship with us and um, what we read in verse 21 and 23 so first Savior had to come so he could save us from our sins and verse 23 he says that his name will be Emmanuel God is with us what what angel was saying to Joseph in this case in a dream is that once again God and man can have relationship that once again like in the beginning of days in the garden of Eden Eve and Adam was walking with God in the cool of the day they were hanging out with God they were talking with God they had a relationship with God that once again that the time is coming 
that this child that is born, his name is going to be Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Um, you know, I was, as I was preparing, I was thinking, why did God choose to name his son Emmanuel? I mean, God could have named him many different names. He, he, he could have given many, many different names. Uh, but for some reason, he chose to give him the name Emmanuel which means God is with us um, because I know one thing one thing uh, throughout the Bible if you read the Bible you you will find out and you'll recognize that God pays a very close attention to names he named Jacob Israel he uh, renamed Abraham Abraham as an Abraham um, he named uh, he uh, when Jesus already was on this earth he uh, renamed Peter and uh, he so the names in the Bible they they speak volume and and God pays a close attention to the name and so and so out of all the names that God the Father could have have given Jesus he've, he has given his him name Emmanuel God is with us God was trying to show humanity that he wants to restore that original position of man where man and God work together when they cooperated when they had a relationship that the religion could be broken and that man and God could have a relationship once again and it's not a coincidence that when Jesus was leaving this earth he said these words I will always be with you till the end of the days because his name was God is with us and so when disciples were, look, were, were looking at Jesus when Jesus was descending they've been thinking like okay you know all of these three three and a half years that we were hanging out with Jesus we thought Jesus is going to be always with us we thought this is our kind of time to rule and reign that he's going to conquer our enemies and all these things and then here Jesus leaving but Jesus before he left with last words he said that I will always be with you once again he reconfirmed his name that my name is Emmanuel God is with us that even though I'm leaving you in a physical body form that I will always be with you through my word and by my spirit and so that's why the birth of Jesus is very significant because now once again humanity that's been lusting that's been craving that's wanted that that relationship that having that having the relationship with their maker with their creator finally that opportunity came with the birth of Jesus to have that void in our hearts to have that 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 peace in our life that could never be replaced with no religion could never be replaced with uh, could never be replaced with set of rules and laws could never be replaced with anything but a true genuine relationship with their maker finally that opportunity was made avail available when Jesus was born his name was Emmanuel God is with us Jesus was born for people he was always with people everywhere we read in the Bible when Jesus started his ministry he was always amongst people he was always healing people setting people free and eventually he died for people Jesus was born for people lived amongst people for people and died for people and then he said I'm not even done with that either I'm gonna be with you after even I live I leave this earth then he said to his disciples I'm going and I'm gonna ask the father so that he sends his spirit so he can be with you and it's gonna be better that he's gonna be with you than I will be with you in a physical body so we have to get one truth and one truth about Jesus is that he is always with us that God is with us and if God is with us then who can be against us Bible says if God is supporting our position then who can come against us if one thing we can take from us and take from to this next year if one if one thought that we could we could hold on to going forward from this day is that God is with us 
is that no matter what we've done no matter what we do and no matter what we will do God has already committed himself he said I will be with you unlike in the beginning in in the garden of uh, of Eden the because of sin the relationship between man and God was broken God created a different plan he made a plan in such a way where that regardless then of our sin if we will fall into sin that we will still have a relationship with God that we still will have access to him and that's why he came on this earth that's why he came um, he came into the place where he would be accessible to everybody instead of coming as a king coming to the palace coming into the royal family we're only uh, we're only uh, rich people we're only noble people will have access to him he was born in a major a manger he was born accessible to poor to rich we see that the wise men the scientists of that time came to him worshiped him we see that the shepherds came to him all races all forms of people all ranks of people were able to have access to him because he was born in a manger he was able to include all humanity so that nobody would be excluded so anybody and everybody could say that God is with me and today we need to recognize once again that Jesus is our savior that with him sin can be conquered and that we don't have to live under the law of sin we don't have to live under the curse of sin and we can enjoy a relationship with God a paradise with God when there is no sin and second of all we need to set our minds we need to set our our, our spirit we need to set our heart on the fact that God is always with us and then when we go throughout the day when we when we when we go through our uh, throughout our struggles when we face hardships in our life maybe we'll face sickness in our life or we face family problems or we face anything in our lives any challenge in our lives that we always remember that God is with us and that if God is with us then we can overcome any obstacle any issue any problem in our life if God is with us if he's supporting my position then I can do anything through Jesus Christ who strengthens me that Jesus' birth marked something in our lives Jesus' birth gave us something that we could not achieve on our own it gave us an access to God it gave us an ability to come to God and have a genuine relationship with him to have a relationship like Adam and Eve had when in the cool of the day they walk with God and they talk with him they had a they have a they had a real genuine relationship that satisfies nothing uh, that satisfies us like nothing else satisfies us and so this morning we're gonna uh we're gonna pray and we're gonna thank God we're gonna come and thank God for the Savior we're gonna thank God that today we today uh, that today we can be forgiven that today we don't have to live under the guilt shame and condemnation that today that even if we fall even if we uh, sin that we have a Savior that doesn't look down upon us but he stretches his hand down to us to lift us up today we uh, we have somebody that cleanses us forgives us washes our sin guilt and shame today we have a person that is interested to be with us we have a person that's interested to to help us out when bible says a righteous falls seven times he gets up not because he's special not because he he's he, he deserved it or not because of whatever reason but because he has a savior because he has somebody that's with him all the time picking him up we as human uh, in a human nature every time we fall we naturally we want to beat ourselves down we want to guilt trip ourselves we, we we feel like we're undeserving but because we have a savior because we have him with us all the time 
that we can always come back to him we can always come to him rely on him he can pick us up and not only just pick us up when we fall he strengthens us to achieve great things he strengthens us to reach for our goals to reach for our destinies to reach for the dreams that God has put in us he empowers us because if he is with us we can do anything if he empowers us we can do anything and the Bible says that if God is for the nation then who can come against her if God is with us then who can come against us Bible says that even the hell, the gates of hell will come against the church but they will not prevail because why because God is with us and so one thing I want us to 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 remember today as we celebrate his birth is that Jesus Christ is with us and if he's with us we can do anything and everything amen